Hey, what's going on everyone? Today I'm going to be covering function calling via the OpenAI API. And you may have seen some videos already that have covered this, but if you're like me, most of them start a little bit too in-depth because it was kind of hard for me to get my head around what it actually was, why it's important, and, and how it kind of works. So as I understand it, the, at the most basic level, it's just a way for you to get your OpenAI language model, which is uh, GP, GPT, I'm never going to say that right, GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 to return you structured output. So it's not going to give you a natural language output to your question or your query, but it's going to give you a structured output. Namely, it's going to give you a structured output in a JSON format. So for you generally to run functions, deterministic, old fashioned functions, I guess, you need fixed inputs, right? So you have a function like we can maybe just even look at the example a little bit already, but you have something like this, add two numbers, number one and two. So this always needs these two inputs. So if a user asks a natural language questions, I have 45 bricks, my wife has 25 bricks, how many bricks do I have in total? I want to make sure that the, the language model only returns to me, like I already forgot what the numbers were, but like 25 and 42 or whatever they were, right? And so then I can run my function on it. What till now what people have done is use elaborate prompting, parsing tricks to try to make it robust, but you're, you're never guaranteed it. It will break at some stage. And if it's an app you're not running and being used by you know a lot of people, chances are it will break. And so this just makes it way more repeatable and robust. So the first question that I had was, what is JSON format? So I have a tiny little example here, right? In Python, I mean, JSON, of course, you can use it outside of Python, but since I'm doing most of my coding in Python, that's where I sort of want to start. So at its core, JSON is just a key value pair structure. So you have something, the JSON data, you have a key name and a value Caesar. The value can be a string, integer, double, a list, a list of strings, anything, right? Age 30, address. So you can you can nest these data structures, right? So address, we can have 123 Main Street, Rome. Zip is this. Hobbies are reading, running, and world domination, right? So, and then we can save this into a file. And then what we'll do, we can actually do that right now. So we can just save that into a file. We can say um, Python JSON example. Uh, ignore the output. And then I say code data.json. And it shows you that I've written that out into in the JSON format, right? Then I can read it, basically, read it as a JSON file. And then I can access those key value pairs or access those keys and it'll print me out the values. That's what I've already done over here. So what it's done is the name was Caesar, age was 30, hobbies are as follows. And if it's a nested, a nested key value pair, you can just access it as such, right? So that's basically it, right? And, and so what you're getting OpenAI to do now is to give you out something in a, in a JSON format. Okay, so this stuff is standard. You know, we can run this. And I'm trying to switch to these Jupyter notebooks because it, it may be easier for you to sort of step through it. Then this is also quite standard, but I've just put a message in here. What is this plus this? So it actually gets it right without any help. So it runs it and then I can rep I can print the, the reply. It's telling me 57 point something. That is the right answer. So, but nevertheless, that's not the point. The point is, why can't we write a function that does this, right? So let's just run that function. I've just defined the function called add to numbers. And this is my second example, Bible verse, but I'll get into that. So what you do for your call, your completion, is now you're using this version, 613 version, right, of 3.5. You give it the same question, but now you define in a JSON format what your function is. It's add to numbers. The description is what allows the language model to know that it should be using this function. Huh, sounds familiar. Yeah, this is pretty much what Langchain and Grip Tape and all of these other ones do. And then you define the actual structure, right? The structure that you want. So out of the natural language, what should what should the language model do? It should give me back number one and number two. So the first number to add, the second number to add, the type is a number. Required, I need number one and two, right? You, you can imagine you have optional parameters in there. Okay, let's ignore all the other ones for now. And then if I run that question, right? So if I run this whole block, it's going to run that question. And another important thing is function call auto, but that you need to tweak this when your language model isn't choosing your tool, right? So now you've said, 
if the question seems appropriate for the tool, choose it. So let's see what it did. So we know that it, it actually had a function call. Which function did it call? Add two numbers. And it got number one and number two, right? And so actually that's the end of it. What you do with those numbers then is, is up to you. So now I can have to manually call in my function that's in the, in the background, right? So if I print this, I can see that I'm getting number one, number two. And I can run my function on this. Actually, I did that here. I can run my function on the output and get the answer. So that's now pretty cool because no matter what I put in here, right? As I said, I can say I have 32 chickens and my friend has 42 goats. How many animals do we have in total? Right, so I run that. Function call number one is 23, number two is 42. So you can see that it's it's very powerful because you are getting the language model to extract the most likely data. So, you know, maybe you can see it already. The content could be something like a CSV file, right? With a bunch of columns, like a bank statement. And then you're saying, okay, just pull me out the columns of this or that, or pull me out sums or averages. And it's going to do that for you, right? And it's going to, then you can run your function on it. So data parsing, I guess, becomes not obsolete, but a lot easier. Okay, so another example that I had was of this Bible verse. So this is actually using a live API. The API is pretty simple. You just give it a the URL with the with the chapter and the verse. It could be that it's a there's a letter in there as well, a letter number. So if I now ask, and I leave it on auto, right? I leave it on auto, and you might see the issues that come up. So if I say, give me a Bible verse about love, right? Okay, and I hit run. So let's see what it does. It goes either way. Okay, no, it, it ran the function call, right? 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. That's awesome, because now... What I can do is I can actually run that function, that whole function. I get the URL and I, I run the API. This is actually running the URL request for API and it prints the data. I forgot the last one. So it gives you the, the famous love is patient, love is kind, right? So that's pretty cool. I'm able to, to essentially write a little sort of web app here, which if you think about it, without this, it's quite tough, right? Like, how would I do this otherwise? Think about just writing standard Python code to go from a natural language input to the words that I just got out. M maybe some word association dictionary, you know, and, and seeing the word frequency. I mean, I'm not an expert in that field, but I can imagine it takes more than just a couple of lines of code to get it to work. So it's, it's quite powerful. The last example I have is the event details. So this might actually show you why you need to specify the function type. So if I say, if I say return the details of an event, right? So I say iPhone, the re announcement of the, fir the first iPhone, and I run it. I'm actually curious what it does. Okay, function call. It figured it out, right? Description, city, San Francisco. We can just look at the, uh, what it output. It output, description, city, and date. And that's exactly what I wanted it to do in the example. So again, that's, that's pretty nice, right? We can, we can give it any event. I wonder what happens if you say moon landing. Okay, so now it actually might get confused because that's very little input. No, nope. <laughs> it got it right. And it got the first moon landing, city, moon, date, July 20, 1969. So there we go. GPT has proven that it wasn't a hoax. Otherwise, they would have put city wherever they think the fake moon landing was. Okay, that's very good. So actually, it worked. But it could be that it doesn't call it, right? It says moon landing and it says it just spits out its natural sort of response, canned response. Well, canned in the sense that it doesn't call your function. Then you can actually specify it, right? Always, always use this function, no matter what the user does. Okay, so that's actually all I wanted to cover. There's a last thing though. I talked about simple AI chat. So the developer is really onto it because he's also implemented his own way to use function calls. And in some sense, it's a little bit easier. So simple AI chat, up till here, if you if you watch my video, it's pretty much the same. He, however, uses Pydentic for base models and field, and you'll see what that means in a minute. So what you have to do is you have, you have to define a class. So this is the same event definition here. I'm just recreating this part with Simple AI Chat, right? So you define a, a class called Get Event, sorry, Get Event Metadata, and it should say based on an event, fill out the details, right? 
And then you've got the same sort of description city year month. These are fields and then the description of it, right? City where these are just these descriptions up here, right? And then you run, you run the chat model, right? And so I think if I run it, it should run. Yeah, exactly. So it ran and it gave it to you. But anyway, guys, as always, the files are in the description. Hopefully I can actually put in a URL in my description. YouTube lets me do that soon. And uh, yeah, if it's helped you, please like it, subscribe, all that usual good stuff. And thanks for watching. Catch you next time.